Who's in charge here? This is ludicrous. The MSI Claw is more than just an ROG ally that's painted black. It comes in three different models, starting at $699, $749, and $799. I would recommend avoiding the $699 model because it only has a Core Ultra i5, and I don't think it's worth the performance hit versus going with the $50 more expensive one at $749, and you get the Core Ultra 7, and the only difference between the $799 one is just getting the extra terabyte of storage. So I'm only going to be looking at the two different models, the one that's $749 and $799, and I'm going to compare them to the other handhelds that we have on the market right now that are really competing with this. Now, pricing for these devices is probably one of the most important things when it comes to getting a new handheld and how much does it cost, and the Steam Deck OLED still offers the best value in my opinion, starting at $549 for the 512GB. Now the operating system, this is very important. It's a Windows handheld, unlike the Steam Deck, which runs Steam OS, which is the biggest downside of all these other handhelds because Windows is an operating system that's not meant to be a handheld. You're meant to have a keyboard and mouse. The Steam Deck has its own custom Linux-based OS that was meant to be a handheld gaming PC designed for that. And everything else just has their own software like Armory Crate on top of Windows, which still doesn't do an amazing job. Now, the APU slash processor, the biggest difference with the MSI Claw is using Intel versus the competition is all using AMD. And the Asus ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go use the same Z1 Extreme chip, while the Steam Deck OLED has its own custom chip that Valve developed with AMD for the Steam Deck. And the MSI Claw is using Intel's new Core Ultra 7 155 with 16 cores and 22 threads. I hope Intel actually supports supports this and makes great optimized drivers for the games that come out. Now the RAM comparison, everything has 16 gigabytes even though the MSI Claw when it was rumored and leaked to come out, it, they said it was going to have 32 in the leaks, but it actually is only going to have 16 gigabytes across the three models. The only standout thing comparing these handhelds is the Lenovo Legion Go it does have DDR5X which is 33% faster versus the competition. Now moving to the display comparison, the Asus R ROG Ally and the MSI Claw look to be using the same 7 inch panel while the Steam Deck OLED is using an OLED panel and not an LCD while the Lenovo Legion Go is the biggest screen at 8.8 .8 inches. Comparing the resolution, the resolution is identical for the MSI Claw and the ROG Ally. Now the Steam Deck OLED has the lowest resolution and then the Lenovo Legion Go has the highest resolution. Steam Deck OLED also compared to the MSI Claw and the competition for that matter is the only one that has HDR support and will be brighter than all the other displays that's 600 nits peak brightness in SDR and 1000 nits in HDR which is awesome. I can't elaborate enough on how much better that is versus your normal LCD screen. Now the refresh rate, MSI Claw is using the same panel as the Asus ROG Ally with 120 hertz. The Lenovo Legion Go does have the fastest refresh rate at 144 hertz and then the Steam Deck OLED's at 90 hertz. I would argue this is not a very important feature across the board for all these handhelds because most games you're going to be playing, if they're a AAA game, you're barely going to be getting 60 FPS, so you're not going to be really taking advantage of these higher refresh rate screens on a handheld and it's just going to kill the battery. Comparing the weight of these devices, which is pretty important as well because you're going to be holding these. Now the MSI Claw is in the middle of the road, the Asus ROG Ally is 608 grams, even though they look identical. the MSI Claw has the back grips and it has a 53 watt hour battery. That Lenovo Legion Go at almost two pounds just seems ridiculous and doesn't really feel like a handheld anymore. Now, comparing the battery size in these devices, which is arguably the most important when it comes to a handheld gaming device, is how long you can actually use it. The MSI Claw has a 53 watt hour battery, so it's 32% bigger than the Asus ROG Ally. It's 7.7 2% bigger than the Lenovo Legion Go, and it's only 6% bigger than the Steam Deck OLED's battery 
at 50 watts for the Steam Deck OLED's battery. Now, I wanted to point this out for one key reason, because in MSI's marketing, when we're looking at all these batteries on these devices, they're saying it has 53 watt hour battery on their website being 50% longer lasting versus the competition. But the biggest difference in battery size is only 32.5%. I don't know where MSI is getting this 50% better battery life versus the competition when their battery at most is 32.5% bigger than the competition. So due to the optimization of how efficient Intel's chip might be, but I highly doubt that because Intel really isn't known for their power efficiency. The standout features for the MSI Claw would be it's powered by the new Intel Ultra 7 155H. It has Hall Effect joysticks, which none of the other handhelds have, and triggers. It has the 53 watt hour battery. It has Thunderbolt 4. That means you can hook up a graphics card to it or an eGPU. The Asus ROG Ally has a dedicated and proprietary connection to use an eGPU, which is terrible. But since this is Thunderbolt 4, it supports any eGPU want to hook up to it so you can hook up any graphics card over Thunderbolt versus Asus's solution where they have a proprietary connection where you have to buy an actual dedicated graphics card just to hook up to your Asus ROG Ally versus if you have a gaming PC you can just hook up your gaming PC graphics card through Thunderbolt so you don't have to buy a dedicated and proprietary connector with that Asus ROG Ally and one more key thing is that it has Wi-Fi 7 4.8 faster speeds than Wi-Fi 6e which is on all the other handhelds. Also, the MSI Claw has the most RGB because it includes the ABXY buttons have RGB. Now, I hope this helped you outline all the different features. I thought this would be helpful since we have so many handhelds coming out in the market, and I hope this was a good video to help you compare and see your options that you have available. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.